Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. For those of y'all that are new, welcome to MDLR Fishing. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. We are trying to fish it up after the storm. Crazy nasty stuff passed through last night, dumped a lot of fresh water into our marsh system. And I just wanna see if I can catch one fish, maybe two, maybe 10. <laughs> As it stands, I really don't care. I just wanna come out here. Uh, very tired from five days of fishing straight I, monday through friday here we are on saturday gonna give it a good go let's see what mother nature has in store for us she's been a you know what lately but uh, it's not gonna stop us so uh let's see what we can do i want to start things out with the clickbait shrimp it pulled some really good numbers for us since we've been using it whenever we found out that the uh the flounder we're uh, spitting them up and then I used it again on yesterday's trip. Definitely worked out for our benefit. Able to land some really nice solid sized donkeys. Them reds are some drag pullers, which I haven't used this setup in a long time. Gotta make sure our drag is set. There we go. Five pound braid right here. A 10 pound fluorocarbon leader for that oyster. That is the setup that we're using. It's a light action Arius rod from Old 18. And uh, this right here, if I failed to tell you, I don't remember. That's a Bugs Clickbait Shrimp. 1 8 ounce. And I'm just hoping that the trolling motor can get us in and out of these little ditches that are way back here without any incident. Last time we ran aground and uh, yeah it broke a sheer pin i'm on my last one i haven't had a chance to go to cabela's to purchase some more and i really like to not break another sheer pin it's a massive back lake i mean this is ridiculous how massive this lake is the grass just goes on i mean it goes on for hundreds of yards and it's flooded too so if there's going to be any reds in here my best bet is that they're gonna be out there in that stuff going where normally they won't be able to just to follow that bait follow the shrimp that's taking refuge in it and then as the tide goes out well all the drains become really good hot spots just had our first incident in how deep are we Right here is the water line. A little over 12 inches of water, but the outboard is completely buried in the mud and it will not come up as I was trying to pull it up right here on the tiller. There's a little plastic piece for the tiller lock that it locks the tiller upwards so that it doesn't have to dangle. Well, that just broke and uh, I'm in a pickle right now because I'm trying to to get the tiller up but I cannot there we go we got her all right there we are just lock her in that position and I just can't believe that happened I'm not gonna let it ruin the day we'll try to make something out of nothing but just a testament to how I thought I was going to be able to get skinny with this watercraft and I just can't do it. Pushing her well beyond the bounds. Oh, that hurts. It really hurts. Got him. Oh, that's a good flounder. I did not think this was going to happen today. Look at that. That is a great keeper sized flounder, y'all. Oh my God. Here we go. Whoo, wowzers. Let's go ahead and get this fella off. Shrimp colored lures. They are working. 17 inch flounder right there y'all get out of jail free card buddy we pushed up 
inside this little ditch right here in the back lake. I mean, this is the furthest reach. I don't think I would be able to get out here if we didn't have that rainfall yesterday. And because of it, it has made the water level just good enough for us to use the Minkota and control where it is that we're going. I am very grateful for that flounder because this day was headed south really quick. But nonetheless, we kept our composure and just stuck to the game plan trying to take shelter from these high winds on the protected shoreline and that's exactly what we've done. So, ah, it's really good whenever a plan comes together and you're able to stick to it and uh, not let the bad things that have happened thwart your, well, just your whatever it is that you're trying to do. So uh, let that be a learning lesson in life. Try to overcome adversity at all costs. There's quite a bit of bait that just went airborne whenever my lure hit the water against the grass. It's not shrimp, but it's still the small stuff that, you know, kind of like what we're throwing. We've managed to work our way into a tiny little back pond off of one of these ditches and I'm hoping that we're gonna be man I cannot cast the, the the winds are really wrecking me and my ability to cast there we go that's what I wanted to do but we've been able to work our way back inside these little pockets they're all over the place back lake is way out that way I would be extremely happy to see some reds pushing awake against the grass line, see the bait going airborne. I'm pretty sure y'all have an idea of like how patient I have been this entire springtime as the water warms and then these cold fronts blow through and then I'm consistently coming out here day after day, keeping the fingers crossed, holding my breath, seeing if we're going to be able to start patterning something and uh, once we put it together truly try and stay on these schooling redfish that happen to I mean this definitely is a place I've heard so many unicorn stories about this area and I just I want to experience it for myself I just have never been able to do it we didn't take custody of the skiff until late fall which was already the season for us was pretty much over winter was early winter was starting to set in and um, that just meant that we were going to have to wait for this season to come up but then we had that darn polar vortex that took place kind of wrecked our coast we were very fortunate up here in galveston area and further north like sabine to have just scraped by and uh, you know, hardly any of the damage was done to us. Okay, oh, I was gonna say, I think we're bottomed out. But, um, yeah, I have not seen the shrimp going crazy the way they would normally do whenever the hatch takes place. And I'm still, like I said, keeping my fingers crossed that we will be able to experience something really soon and today is one of those warm days that you love to look for although every bit of the conditions are not falling in line with one another so we got the warmth of the weather after the front pushed through last night dumped a lot of water we don't have the, <laughs> the winds to our advantage you gotta love these micro skiffs a lot of people don't understand why you want these platforms but this is the perfect example of what you're able to do with them whenever you can squeeze into tight areas it may get super shallow turn that trolling motor down just a little bit i don't want to run aground and then crack the hole the way i did last time i cannot get over how massive this back lake is right here y'all i mean it is just absolutely ginormous there's so much water to try and cover that it's just crazy. You can isolate a lot of it, like out in the middle, just stay away from it unless there's grass. But for everything else, you're just wanting to try and pay attention to the grass line, 
The only way I would go out into the middle of it is if there were uh, some birds working. And once you see that, then you can go out there. If you see a slick, then you can venture out and maybe check it, see if there's going to be any feeding fish. But aside of that, I'm just strictly going to try to find a, ba a bank line and fish that. That's oyster. You usually tend to catch bigger fish with this lure right here because it's got one of the biggest profiles that I sling. But the whole thing about small lure, small fish, that couldn't be further from the truth. Whenever you open up the redfish belly or a flounder's belly, I mean any fish that you're catching, open up their bellies and you can see what it is that they're feeding off of. A smart fisherman will try and match the hatch and all you're doing is basically when I say you're, if you're, a, if you're a smart fisherman, you're just trying to identify what you see alongside that bank and let's just match it. That's what I try to do. More often than not it pays off for me. And if it's just small fish out there that are feeding and being aggressive, well then that's what you're going to catch. But you know, just take what you can get. Have a great time. Catch some fish. You're not always going to be a winner, man. I'm telling you what. There we are. Okay. There we are. That's a red. I say, little bitty fella, but I am very grateful for him. He's just been caught too. Look at that right there. There goes my hook set. And then this guy got caught right there again. You need to learn, little buddy. Don't go after these. Stick to the ones that all look alike. There we go. That's a pretty little guy. Got that gorgeous blue tail. Fish number two. I knew this little water break, this road, whatever it is, uh, was definitely going to have to provide us with an opportunity, and it's why I stuck with it. Man, we went to quite a ways, too. So that's going to do it for today's trip. Thank you so much again for tagging along. we got to get back. Uh, hopefully, West Marine is open. We can see if they've got that part in stock for our motor, and uh, we'll be back up and running without that. I mean, I can still operate the skiff without it, but I would love to have it because it makes um, getting the prop out of the mud whenever we get shallow. So thanks again. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to click that thumbs up button. And until next time, tight lines, y'all.